Camera overlays. Webcam borders. They're so beautiful. They're so colorful. They're so complicated. They're so clean. So today I had an idea for a clean looking camera border, webcam border, camera overlay, whatever you want to call it. And that's what we're going to be making. And as usual, I will provide links for you to download them so you can use them yourself. Uh, I might even throw in a little project file in there if you're using Adobe After Effects, that is. But if you don't, that's fine. You can just use the camera overlay the way I intended it to be used. This video is sponsored by Air. Okay, we can start now. So I'm gonna make the first part of this video as accessible as possible. We're gonna be using a free online editor. So we're not using Photoshop. I can't do this, I don't have Photoshop. You don't need Photoshop. Let's do it on photopia.com. I think it's meant to be pronounced photop, but like photopia sounds more sophisticated, you know? Anyways, step one, new project. Step two, set the resolution, 1920 by 1080. DPI 300, it's overkill. Oh, whoops, it changed this. Let's set it up again right background white let's make it black you know it we don't care actually transparent boom and create okay step number two find the rounded rectangle tool if there is one there isn't one just find the rectangle tool then okay check up there corner radius you want to input a hundred there you go so we have a big nice rounded rectangle then you can fill out the whole screen this is going to be the wide angle and then we'll add a gradient so while this rectangle is still selected go to fill here and pick what looks like a gradient booyah now here's the question what colors do i choose first of all you should have a color scheme by now if you're making a camera overlay but it doesn't matter let's look up gradients on google so i'm gonna type two color gradient and i'm gonna go on google image and i can pick whatever i like i can i can even pick a three color gradient from there for example you can just get inspired apparently this magenta to yellow is kind of uh, popular so we'll, we'll do something similar so go back here in the fill let's click on the gradient and we're gonna double click this color this is gonna be the first color and uh, let's pick what was it some sort of magenta okay and then the other one was yellow okay cool okay click okay boom go back to your gradient and then you will see some extra 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 options uh let's scale it up a little bit so the gradient is gonna be softer basically it's gonna take more space we we like that we can play around with the angle um we're not gonna have the full page be uh visible so we want it to be as close to zero as possible it can even just be zero it, it'll be a linear gradient but we don't work in linear fashion okay just click away and then we are going to grab our mask tool our rectangle mask tool we're gonna drag up here and we're just gonna have just the bottom part like that okay now while this is selected we're gonna click on mask it's the rectangle with a round in it with a circle in it wow i actually should have picked a <laughs> background color for the canvas that's fine new layer boom go find the bucket tool you see the gradient tool there click hold Boom, paint bucket tool. Now we're gonna make our foreground color black. You can just click in the background right there. Boom, it's gonna make, it's gonna switch them up. And then with the layer one selected, we're gonna click uh, once. There you go. We're gonna bring our background on top of it and we're gonna duplicate the background. We can drag it to that new file little icon there. Okay, that works. Or you can also hold Alt on your keyboard and then drag it up to create a new one. I'm gonna control Z on that. Now we're gonna right click on the mask that's the black and white part we're gonna click delete raster mask well this is selected we're gonna click on the rectangle tool then we'll click on fill again and we'll select a plain color so just click color and then make this white what we essentially just created is a super clean just bottom part overlay but also a mask let's grab the gradient color and put it up there okay and we can turn off this. And now we can export it. We're gonna need two different files, one for the mask and one for just the overlay. This is the overlay that you're looking at right now. Click file, export as PNG. Make sure the size matches, click save. Pulling the file cam overlay, press enter to save. And then I'm turning it off here and I'm turning back on my mask. I'm doing the same thing, calling it cam mask. Technically we're ready, but there's an issue here. The issue here is that we only have the wide version. We want a smaller or thinner version of it. So what I can do is turn on my top layer, boom. Hold shift to select the top layer and also the white mask. Press control alt T to bring up the transform tools. And then we're gonna drag the sides. 
like that. And now we're going to export the narrower version. Let's start by exporting the mask. So we're going to turn off the color, export as PNG, and we're going to call this one narrow. Turn off the mask, turn on the color, export as PNG. Boom. Woo. Now let's say if I wanted to add it to OBS Studio, let me move myself here. I'm sorry for the inception. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Go at the bottom here of your source list. Click the plus. What was it? It was an image. So we're going to click on image. We're not going to name it because you're going to do that. I don't have time for this. Let's go find our overlay. All right, let's go with the narrow one. Okay. Now it's going to be full screen. Okay. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. And now our camera mine is cropped right now. So I'm going to hold alt to uncrop the sides. You know, my camera is going to be like that. It's a widescreen camera. Now, just for the sake of visibility, I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to right click on my camera source. You see HDMI, that's my camera. And I'm going to go to filters right there. Boom. I'm going to click plus to add a new effect filter. Booyah. And I'm going to pick image mask blend. Click OK. And I'm going to click browse. And we're going to pick our mask. I'm going to click open. And look at that some rounded rectangles. And now all you have to do is basically make them match, you know, that make them match the, the same size, apply them to each other. The best way of doing it is keeping it full screen. Like I can make my camera full screen right now and it will match perfectly. And I'll just have to group them together. How do you group two things together? You hold uh, control, I believe. <laughs> you hold control and then you click on the other layer. Yes, that works. You right click on them and then you click group selected items that's in obs studio now it's going to ask you to give the group a name cams boom and now they can all move together if i turn this one on uh they should move together but i obviously forgot to do the step of making it full screen let me make it full screen real quick i'm just gonna right click actually and i'm gonna go transform fit to screen oh yeah now if you click on the group you can move those together you can scale them together and you're fine look at that clean of course this doesn't necessarily match my color scheme right now although we can make that happen let me see what is it orange and then some form of red okay there you go if that was my color scheme this is what i would make my lights <laughs> look like in order to match the whole thing i can make and even change it even more look at that beautiful all right how to do it in streamlabs you'll click the plus button to add your camera video capture device already have mine in this scene so i'm gonna click add source i'm gonna make sure it's picking up my camera here we are click done and then we're gonna add click on the plus to add a new source click image add a new source instead and then we're gonna go find our overlay let's add the wide overlay this time cam overlay you can see it's very wide it's 1080p and it already kind of matches my camera but those borders those pesky borders they don't look good so let's right click on the video capture device. Let's go to filters. Let's click plus and let's add a mask. Oh, look at that by default image mask slash blend. Click done, click browse, find the mask. Boom. And now it matches. Now you can group them up. This time you can hold shift. Okay. And there's the group button there. But if you don't want to use the group button for some reason, you could also right click and go to group group into folder. And we call this one cams, even though that doesn't make sense. Now with the cams folder selected, you can set this like this. You can set this like that. It is beautiful. It is just mwah, mwah, mwah. of course, those four files will be available to download for free, but that was easy. It was free. That was easy. Okay. So now this is the part where the free part stops ish you could do it with some free software but we're gonna open up after effects and animate the colors a little bit okay here in adobe after effects we're gonna create a new project boom brings me here and now we're gonna just drag and drop the overlay that we created all right we can start with the large overlay the wide overlay if you will boom so i drag it into the project and now i can go ahead and just drag and drop it into a new composition right there now i have a new composition now to make sure that you know the animation and everything is going to look good you're going to go to composition composition settings and uh check your settings okay so it's 1080p normal everything good 60 fps of course we're gamers after all i guess console gamers <laughs> and we want the animation to last 10 seconds you can put that whatever whatever you want click ok and now we can add whatever you want we could go ahead for example and add a new layer and go adjustment layer all right and in my effects preset tab here i can type glow and we can drag and drop glow to it 
okay and now we can play with the glow threshold and all of that basically it's gonna make it glow it's gonna make it glow glow radius we can make it a little bigger like that but since it's going to be cut off by the borders it's not gonna look good anymore you don't you want you want your stuff to look good right right let's just create a mask i'm gonna click on the pen tool here and we're gonna create a mask that is not that close to the borders so i'm gonna start here i'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that and i'm going in the middle here all right and i'm gonna go back you don't need to be precise at all now with the adjustment layer selected i'm gonna type mm that's basically the mask properties and i'm gonna feather it out so right now for example here i'm holding a middle mouse button to move around you can see with the feathering so that's without feathering and that's with all the feathering we want all the feathering okay we're gonna make it like that nice and now we can just animate the glow for example right animating the glow is something we can do we could just use the opacity here by pressing t you know make this zero 100 zero or we can animate the glow intensity i personally like animating the glow intensity it looks a little bit more uh, natural so where it says 100 percent here i'm actually going to make it fit so we can go back okay and i want this to go from zero to one or to more we'll see but we definitely wanted to start with zero and you can control you know how gradual gradual you want your glow to be uh, the glow effect tends to give you that that little shadow if you don't want the shadow what you can do is go to glow dimensions and pick horizontal all right in that case there will be no shadows but the glow is just gonna stay within that limit basically like if i turn it up there you go it's not going outside of it let's put it back because i kind of like this all right so you want to put the playhead wherever you want the animation to start here we're gonna put like in the first frame we're gonna put glow intensity and we're gonna click on the little stopwatch that means we activated keyframes so if we move anywhere in time and we change a value it will record that and try to breach the gap basically so if i go in the middle for example five seconds and i put this at whatever value i kind of want like that for example like really crazy with it but it's for the sake of example and i go at the end and i put it back to zero by typing zero now it's gonna gradually go to this and then go back down so that's the animation we created basically it goes up and then it go down you can change the mask shape you can change the settings you can change uh everything but remember, the glow intensity, you already have keyframes. One way to see the keyframes is clicking on this, pressing U, and it will show you the keyframes right there. Glow intensity, you see the keyframes. So if you want to delete them, move them, or whatever, you are fine. Talking about that, let's put ourselves in the middle here. You can see this glows because that's a keyframe. Um, we're going to bring it down a little bit. Maybe, maybe this too much. Just a little bit now since the other ones don't have keyframes we can play around with the radius and all of that good stuff and then the threshold and as you can see like the threshold can go very high basically but if i keep it there um not a huge fan of it but hey we can make it work i'm just gonna modify the mask a little bit make sure i have my move tool selected select the mask here okay and i'm gonna move it just to make sure i don't go too close to the borders All right, I think that's nice. Let's we might play with the intensity a bit more now. Okay, so now we have this going on like that. That could be it. That could be it. We can add a new adjustment layer. So layer, adjustment layer, and maybe we want to play with the colors a little bit. We want them to shift a little bit. So let's do something. Let's go to effects and probably color i'm improvising this by the way <laughs> let's go with something simple hue saturation we know that works so master hue we're gonna click on this the second zero here and we're gonna move it around until we see something that we might like hey you want to make uh your stuff rgb uh that's how you make it rgb and in that case it's in a circle so you can just make the value go to zero zero up to one up here it's basically one loop should we do this should we shall we do this let's let's do it let's do it then so we're gonna bring our playhead to the beginning to the beginning and then we're gonna make sure everything is at zero we're gonna click the stopwatch on color change okay we're gonna go to the end of the composition and we're gonna click on that first zero and type one because we wanted to do one loop one loop please in 10 seconds now if we play it 
it gets the glow, but it also gets the RGB. Super soft. And it should go back since it did a full loop. It is seamless. I actually love this. This is great. This is great. This is amazing. Okay, boom. Now let's export it. Click composition. Click add to render queue. <laughs> On output module, click lossless. On format, you want to click QuickTime. You want to make sure that format options, it's animation. And then here's the secret to transparency. Under video output, you want to go to channels and select RGB plus alpha. Booyah. There's no sound with it, so we can click audio output off, uh, but that doesn't matter. And then we're going to save it somewhere over the rainbow. So we're going to call this one animated cam overlay save and on the right where my face is you're gonna click render Boop. jesus <laughs> all right now the good news is that the same mask that we used before we can still use the, the exact same mask we don't need an animated mask or anything let's uh drag uh, obs in there okay we're back into inception city i'm gonna show you how to import an animated overlay just it's just a video it's basically a video file click the plus Go to media source, because that's when it's moving, it's a media source. Click OK. Well, you should name it, but click OK. And here we're going to find our animated cam overlay.mov. Click open and then click loop. Loop is very important. If it doesn't loop, it's going to stop after 10 seconds. Loop and then we're good. And there it is in all of its glory. Now, all you have to do is make sure that your webcam is behind it and add the, the appropriate mask. So I'm going to turn this off for now. Go to HDMI, which is my camera. Go right click, click filters. Remember, we have the wrong mask right now. We have the narrow mask. So click image mask blend, click browse, and I'm going to find the normal mask. Now it's going to be larger than the one that I'm currently using. I'm going to close this. I'm going to turn off the second one. I'm going to right click and fit to screen. Boom. And right now I know you can't see because now we're full screen. I'm going to put the new media source on top of my camera in the group that I created. If there's no group, just create a group and I'm going to turn it on. And now I have a clean RGB webcam border. It could probably even match my colors with my lighting. Okay, so basically I'm going to do the same thing for the other narrower one. And if you're wondering how to add this one to Streamlabs OBS, it's also a media source. So click plus source media source. Click the loop. So all of the files will be available at gumroad.com slash get level. You will find the four image files, two masks, two overlays, two video files, the narrow, the wide animated ones, and one Adobe After Effects file. If you own Adobe After Effects and you want to modify it, you can do that too. It's available for free, but Gumroad also allows you to give a donation if you want to support the channel. You can also do that. Just enter whatever amount you would like to give. Something I don't say enough in my videos is that I stream on Twitch. So check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash level. I play video games there, but I also do live shows that are dedicated to live streamers. So you might be interested in that. Anyways, I'm super happy that you took the time to watch watch my video. If you're interested in more live streaming stuff, YouTube will tell you what video you should watch next. And at the bottom of it, you will see my most recent video. So you can keep on learning about live streaming in general. But in the meantime, thank you so, so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Go out there, make me proud, get level, out.